Thanks for joining our monthly community webcast. I'm Jürgen Kress, responsible for past partner adoption at Oracle. In case you missed one of our webcasts, on-demand recordings are available for details. Please see our monthly community newsletters. In today's presentation, Hashir, Mabruk, Ryan Patrick, and Martin Chavez will give us an update on how to innovate human capital management solutions with chatbots. Objective of the call is to show you how to extend HCM with chatbots. Oracle Digital Assistant is a platform to build chatbot solutions. ODA offers pre-built skills, bots that can be used out of the box, for example, to check employee benefits or holiday balance. So let's get started. For today's agenda, Hashir will start why conversation experiences are key for HCM. Martin from our team will give a live demo on HCM skills and an overview of Oracle Digital Assistant. Ryan will let you know how you get started with HCM and how to connect it to chatbots. I will close with the next steps and how we can support you. With that, over to you, Hashir. Thank you, Jürgen. Hi, everyone. And uh, thank you for joining uh, this call. Uh, I think, I hope this will be an interesting call for, uh, for you all as uh, Digital Assistant is maybe one of um, our most popular new features in uh, Oracle HCM Cloud. It's driving a lot uh, of interest from, um, from the customers. And I really think it's um, a great time to have this, uh, this webcast and that it's the right time for all of us to start accelerating with the digital assistant for our HCM customers. We have a very strong offer. Uh, we have um, pre-delivered skills. We have a very strong platform. So uh, it's, um, it's the right moment for us to start accelerating together. So as I said before, there is um, a lot of interest for digital assistant from our um, customers. Some of them have, um, started to implement. Some of them are thinking about uh, starting to implement and uh, some of them are, um, are already live and we'll, I will talk a, a little bit uh, more about that, uh, about that later. And there is many reasons for this uh, big interest from our HCM customers. Maybe the first reason is um, that digital assistant is becoming a common practice in the enterprise, or at least is expected to become a common practice in uh, the enterprise quite, uh, quite soon. So according to, to Gartner, um, by 2022, 70% of white collar workers are expected to interact with conversational interface on, um, on a daily basis. We are already seeing that in our everyday life. Most of us are somehow talking to our uh, mobile phone. Um, many of the cars have some kind of, um, of voice conversation or voice interaction. And most of us, we are interacting with customer service through bots, at least in the beginning of the, of the interaction. And we all know that when those kind of um, practices become common in everyday life and in the consumer space, usually they arrive quite soon after in the enterprise and usually the HR teams are quite leading the adoption, especially because they have a big interest and a big focus and an employee experience. And employee experience is certainly the second big reason why HR teams are very interested in, uh, in digital assistant. According to um, a recent study from Deloitte, 84% of CHRO consider human experience as very important, but only 43% of them think they are ready. So there is um, a gap to bridge and digital assistant can be a, a tool, a great tool to, to help uh, HR teams and CHRO bring these gaps and to provide engaging simple and efficient experiences to, to their workforce. And not only it will help them provide these engaging experiences, allowing the users to get information and uh, to perform tasks at, uh, at no time, but by doing this, they will increase the productivity of their employees, of their managers, of the HR professional, and they will reduce the costs of the, of the call center. And this is probably becoming even more important with the COVID crisis 
and the increase of, uh, of remote working where employees need more support, more guidance and have, and have more questions. Just to give you an example of the value that the customer can get out of the digital assistant, one of our early digital assistant platform customer who has used the digital assistant for uh, HR self-service, support and policy. So uh, Honeywell is not even uh, a cloud customer yet. Maybe they will become a cloud customer, but they implemented digital assistant, as I said, for self-service, support and policy. And they were able to reduce the volume of question by 900K question and to reduce the hours of um, the, the call center staff by 140,000 hours. So you can see here the potential ROI that we can have for our joint HR customers. And every time there, there are volume transaction, there are volume questions, there are challenges in adoption, it's a good use case for digital assistant and we can, expand, we can expect, sorry, a big ROI. So our vision at Oracle is that in the near, near future, almost every HR transaction will be done through digital assistant. Mostly self-service transaction, but not only. And uh, Steve Miranda was saying that he expects that in the next year or so, we will be calling our HTML solution our old, uh, our old UI. And to, to realize this vision, to, 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 to make it real, we have started to deliver Digital assistant enable HR transaction, what we call the pre-delivered HCM skill. So it's, uh, they are accessible through natural language, uh, they are accessible through multiple channels, they are out of the box, and customers can start using them very, very, very easily. You can see here a sample of, um, of our digital assistant uh, pre-delivered transaction. As you can see, it's quite pervasive across our HCM solution. It covers the recruiting space where candidates can apply, can check the status. Uh, the recruiter also have some transaction around uh, uh, withdrawing the, around a couple of uh, checking the, the, the status of the application and so on. We have also some ready to use transactions on onboarding, <clears throat> on absence and time where I can update my absences, on pay and compensation where I can view my pay slip, on global HR and so on. And beyond those pre-delivered skill, there is also a very important platform component that is there. So if we take the example of one of um, our early customers, maybe uh, the first customer on uh, the HCM pre-delivered skill, Hilton, they are using the, the pre-delivered transaction on feedback that, um, that, you can, that you can see here, but they wanted to modify that into uh, uh, give me five or give me a kudo. And they were able to do it quite easily by using our extensibility capabilities. Also, as they are um, a strong brand, they wanted to, um, to personalize the message of the digital assistant, the way the digital assistant interacts with the users. And this was possible with, uh, again, our extensibility capabilities. So there is a great value with the pre-delivered skill joined with the power of the platform. With that, our customers can start very quickly using the pre-delivered skill, but they can also customize, personalize, go beyond and uh, drive more success and, um, and, uh, and more adoption. And this is why it's really very important to have in mind that Pre-delivered skill are there to accelerate. We are going to enrich them to make them even more pervasive. But let's don't forget the, what, what the platform can bring in terms of uh, extensibility, ability to use the digital assistant on any channel and so on. And Martin will give you a little bit more insight about the platform and will also showcase a demo of, um, of the pre-delivered skill. So the HCM pre-delivered skill are quite recent, but we have been running our digital assistant platform since um, three years now. And we are quite proud of uh, our customer momentum. We have more than uh, 400, 450 customers that have deployed our digital assistant. Uh, you can see um, 
some of the locals here. Some of them are HCM locals, so I'm going to talk about Hilton. But I wanted also to highlight another customer that is our first early adopter customer for the, uh, for the HCM skills in the region, in EMEA. It's Abu Dhabi Customs, so it's a government organization in the, in the UAE. Uh, they have 1,500 employees and they are live now on our HCM, uh, core HCM solution in, uh, in the cloud. And from the beginning, it was very important for them. It was a main criteria of choice to uh, adopt a solution that is a modern solution and that has embedded AI and digital assistant because they wanted to make sure that uh, they could make the solution evolve and that they would drive the right level of, um, of adoption from the users. And they were quite successful in doing that as 80% of the employees started using the platform from the first week. And the second customer, I've been already talking about them from the beginning, it's Hilton. Hilton is um, a very important customer for us because it's our first customer on the pre-delivered uh, digital assistant HCM skills. They have 180,000 uh, employee and as I, was, um, as I was saying before, they have personalized the digital assistant. So they named, named the digital assistant and they named the digital assistant Connie after their founder, Conrad Hilton. And they, they were really keen to start, uh, to be the first one to start in the early adopter program because digital assistant is very important to them. They have so many workers that are mobile and they have limited HR staff and sometimes no HR staff at all. Um, so they already rolled out for 100,000 employees, and you can see here they, they started the rollout on absence, directory lookup, payslip, uh, manager and employee self-service, uh, performance management, and, uh, and anytime feedback. And today the, 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 the typical transaction is performed in less than one minute, and they are, are quite happy with uh, what they've been able to achieve. And um, hopefully after uh, the COVID crisis, they will be able to expand for uh, the rest of the, um, of the employees. But this is already helping them to, uh, to make sure that the HR teams focus on added value during those uh, challenging times. And uh, this is um, a very important part of their strategy to maximize the service delivery and, uh, and ease of use. So we have some other customers who have started the implementation and uh, who are going to be live quite soon. I hope that we will be able to talk about them in, uh, in the next call. And now I'm going to hand it over to Martin for the demo and more insight on the platform. Thanks very much, Roger. Uh, I'm going to just give you a quick uh, demo of those HCM skills that uh, Heyo was just talking about. Uh, so again, I'm sure somebody will tell me if you can't see my screen, so I'm going to, I'm assuming you can, I'm going to carry on. So what you see here is just the, the regular Fusion HCM uh, homepage. Um, I'm sure you've all seen this demo many times before at Vision Enterprises. Uh, I'm logged in as Brian Joseph. Uh, I've used it, I'm sure we're all very familiar with. Uh, but maybe, maybe what you haven't seen before is this new chat bubble down in the bottom right hand corner. And this is a way in which we've exposed the HCM skills through a digital assistant into HCM. So if I click on the chat bubble, you see immediately the HR assistant is saying, hello, Brian, how can I help you today? And it's picked up my username and my identity because I'm logged into HCM already as Brian Joseph. So that's followed straight through to the digital assistant uh, chat window. So um, just have to pretend I've got a, a little HR issue I want to deal with. Um, I got a, a medical appointment I need to book. I need to speak to somebody in HR about it. Now, one of my colleagues has suggested that I should speak to someone in HR called Paul Carson. So let's just find out who, who Paul Carlson, Carlson is. And you see, as I was typing there, it was putting up typing suggestions. Uh, some of the other things on the window, I can use voice. Uh, I could have it reading out to me the answers if I wished, uh, or I could actually talk to the bot. Um, but if we've got today, I can keep this simple and just type it. So that's Paul Carlson. I've never spoken to Paul before, so I can see that Paul's in Susan's team. I'm going to 
who else else is in Susan Copeland's team? Let's see who else is in that particular team that I can talk to in HR. Oh, Linda, there's Linda. I've spoken to Linda before. There's Linda's telephone number. Uh, before I call Linda, I'm sure she's going to ask me about um, the medical insurance. So who is our medical provider? And we are members of Medical PPO and there's my employee uh, membership number. That's all around good. So the other thing I need to know is find out how much leave I've got left. How much leave do I have left? So I have 72 hours sick leave available to me, so that's perfectly enough time to uh, sort out this little medical issue I need to deal with. Uh, I could click the button here and go into HCM and make my booking, but I'm going to call Linda first. So imagine that a few minutes have gone past. I've spoken to Linda. Uh, Linda was really helpful. So what I'm actually going to do now is uh, uh, I want to leave feedback for Linda Gans. So I'm going to say that Linda was very helpful and very professional. And who can see this feedback? Everyone can see it. And do I want to confirm Linda was right? Yes, I'll confirm that message. So there we go, there's feedback for Linda. While I'm here, I'm just gonna say, uh, show you who's in my team, who is in my team. And so I've actually got 11, uh, but actually it's uh, Harold that I need to look into, Harold Chow. So there's Harold Chow's details. What I was working on was uh, Harold's uh, promotion. So show me Harold Chow's salary. Now, clearly, I couldn't. Uh, hmm, have I spelled Harold incorrectly? Uh, clearly, I can't do that on someone else who doesn't work in my team. And today, for some reason, he's despite testing this 30 times before the call. <laughs> Let's try that again. Harold Chow. There we go. So I couldn't do that on someone who was in my team uh, because it. Um, uh, sticks to all the security rules that are all in HCM already. Uh, I can see my own salary and I can see the salary of the people who work for me, but I couldn't just ask for any old person in the company. So all the security rules are all adhered to. Uh, and I could also then say promote Harold. I can spell his name correctly this time. There we go. And that would again would take me into HCM. So even though it's taking me into the application, I don't have to remember all the menus. I don't have to know what the navigation pass was. It's going to take me straight to the function that I need to actually do that promotion. Uh, so while I've got control, I'm going to quickly show you another demonstration that we've got uh, hanging around. Um, very topical at the moment, I know, is what's happening around COVID-19. And you're probably looking at this technology thinking, wow, you know, we could really help people out. Uh, so that's exactly what's been happening over the last few weeks. Uh, we have developed this uh, sample skill uh, that we're giving away basically to anybody who wants it. Um, if you were to download the slides from today's presentation, you will find a slide in that deck that has got a link and the username and password where you can get to this demo. And there's also a link where you can download the source code. So if you have access to a digital assistant instance, and Jürgen will tell you there in this webcast how to do that, you'd be able to download this uh, sample skill, uh, install it into your own digital assistant instance, and customize and extend it as you need. So some of the things that this bot can do already is you could say, uh, what is COVID-19? And the data we're pulling here is all from the World Health Organization. What are the symptoms? Um, what else can I ask? Uh, how long do they take to appear? 
Uh, so those are just simple frequently asked questions. Uh, we also have a live feed to an external web service which is giving sort of all the, the status state. Um, I could say what is the status of, in Australia? Oops, I made a typo there, but it shouldn't really matter. I made two typos. So it's looked up the data and it's, it's bringing, us, bringing us back a live feed of what the current data is, current status is. Uh, I could also go into, uh, I think I have symptoms. Uh, and again, we've taken uh, what is a sort of um, 10 sample questions, which are generally used by physicians to just do a preliminary sort of um, diagnosis. So you can do a self-diagnosis and ask you 10 questions. First of all, it's saying, do you want to take part in this? Uh, how often do you need to cough? Well, frequently. Uh, do you experience any difficulties breathing sometimes? And so we'd go through those questions. And at the moment, we're just saving all that data into an Oracle database. Uh, clearly, if you had some sort of ticketing system or however you wanted to use that, you could push that data somewhere else. Or indeed, you could customize those questions to ask some other questionnaire or survey, depending on you wanted. Uh, the other things that we've been looking at is not just around COVID-19, but some of the knock-on effects. And we're all having to work from home these days. So when that first happened, a lot of help desks were being overrun with questions like, can I work from home? And so some simple things here, what, what, what is a VPN? Some people have never had to use a VPN before. How do I set up a VPN? So there's all the instructions. So those are just some uh, two sample skills that I'm showing you there. Uh, well, the HCM skills and the, the sample skill that you can download. And again, as I said, they're in that slide deck if you want to get hold of them. So if I just going to quickly move into now and talk about the, the platform that's actually running all of this, uh, give you an overview of the digital assistant. Uh, what we've seen is two different skills so far, the out-of-the-box skill, and we've seen uh, effectively a custom stick skill that we've built. So the big question is how do you bring those together into one sort of seamless conversation experience? Uh, because as a user, you don't want to have to deal with 10 different chatbots. What you want is one digital assistant that's actually going to help you get things done. Uh, and that's where the digital assistant platform comes in. So on this diagram, you can see on the left hand side, we've got you know, the typical collection of, of applications that you may have in your organization, um, whether they're in the cloud, on-premise, custom built, who knows from Oracle, not Oracle, who knows where they come from. Um, you can then have a collection of skills. Um, we just talked about two, um, but imagine you know, there are skills coming from Oracle, we've got a portfolio of skills coming, uh, some of which we'll talk about in a moment. And, um, you know, you could build custom build skills, you could get skills as a partner, you could develop skills and offer those. So you'd have a whole portfolio of skills that will actually sit in the skill store. And then you combine and you assemble the digital assistant you want to build out of the skills that we have available. So here you see we've got four skills that have been put together under this one digital assistant. And then that whole digital assistant exposed on one or more channels. So far, I've just been showing you the web channel, uh, but we could easily just deploy that same digital assistant on, on both WhatsApp, Microsoft Teams, uh, Facebook, or even on a voice channel. And I showed you the button for where you could do the voice channel for Oracle Voice, uh, or you could e equally do uh, Alexa or Siri or Google Home if you wished as well. So channels and digital assistants and skills. Now, if you look inside a skill, the, uh, there are four main building blocks. The, the main one that uh, I want to talk about is the conversational AI engine. That's probably the most important. We're using machine learning and natural language understanding to actually recognize what it is the user is asking for and matching that to an intent that the bot has been trained with. Now, the reason we do that is because nobody wants to have to learn the key phrases that the bot understands. The bot should understand you the way you talk. And every organization has its own kind of internal vocabulary, its own phrases and things. So you have to train the bot uh, through the natural language understanding modules to add in that extra training data and you know, that extra understanding. So all that's built into the conversational AI engine. But a, a bot is not just about understanding what you said. It actually gets to a point where you actually have to have a two-way dialogue between the end user and the bot. And that's where our dialogue flow execution engine comes in. Uh, it's a, a sophisticated state machine. Uh, it's very declarative. You don't have to write any code. Uh, you define what the conversation looks like. 
and uh, the the engine will kind of manage that conversation you can kind of speak to things out of turn the thing about human beings is that we never do things in a linear fashion we tend to jump around quite a bit so uh, however you ask the questions however the conversation looks that's all defined in the dialogue flow uh, next piece we sort of touched on a little bit in the uh, covid19 bot was the enterprise data integration so a bot that's actually useful is one that does something which is connected to a back-end system, either reading or writing data. Um, that's the most useful bot you can actually have. And to do that, you need a, a, you know, an integration type of or a data connectivity uh, set of tools. So there's an SDK and a set of APIs that you can use to invoke REST APIs really easily and uh, pull data into your, app, into your bot or, or to write transactions. And then the last piece is the channel configurator. This is where you actually configure and you connect very declaratively any one of these channels, one or more of these channels, to your skill or your digital assistant. Now, the, the key piece is how do you make sure those all those individual skills act as one? And here you'll see at the top we've got a digital assistant, and underneath that three skills. And just imagine these are three uh, skills that would be available. So maybe you've got a skill for job offers, a skill for benefits, skill for procurement and the digital assistant sitting above all of those. Uh, you've got a new employee that's come in and the employee's typed into the digital assistant, I want to order a new laptop. Now the digital assistant looks across all of the training data. Remember this is an AI powered engine, so it looks across all of the training data it's got and it figures out which of the skills it has got access to can best answer the person's inquiry. So it routes the user to the procurement skill. And then the procurement skill, if there's a dialogue flow defined around uh, ordering the status of a new laptop, um, then it will go through that. Um, but basically, you're, you're inside the procurement skill he's dealing with now. And then as part of that flow, if the end user was to suddenly say, what day do I start my new job? Um, clearly, procurement doesn't know about when you start your new job. That's in the job offer skill. So the job offer skill, uh, so the digital assistant will reroute the end user to the job offer skill. And then you can jump around between the skills so the end user doesn't really need to know that they're in different skills. All of that enables us to do five different types of conversations. So we have a very transactional one, and I've shown you some examples of that. Some FAQs, frequently asked questions. Uh, some of the things we didn't get to show you today, but are really important, is this live, live agent handoff. So whilst you're talking to the bot, if, you, if the bot for any reason hasn't been trained on how to answer a particular query, if the end user is starting to get a bit, uh, perhaps a bit shouty, perhaps they, they're typing in all caps or using some foul language, you never know, then maybe you want to hand them off to a live agent to uh, handle their query that way. And then when the live agent's finished, it can pass them back to the bot to complete the conversation, complete the transaction. Uh, another area is if you've been using uh, Oracle's Intelligent Advisor, what used to be called policy automation, you might have already defined some fairly complex questionnaires. Uh, they can also be exposed through digital assistant as a conversation or well, the last one is uh, so far everything we've seen is where the end user has communicated with the bot what if the bot could actually start the conversation and in this case we can send an alert to the end user either through sms or through teams or through slack uh, and that will kick off the conversation and bring the user into the conversation dialogue with the bot so that's uh, all the different things we can do with digital assistant Ryan, I'll come back to you. Right, so as, uh, thanks Martin for that. So um, what I'm gonna talk about now, we've kind of spoken about what you get, uh, or how do you actually turn it on for your customers. Um, so the underlying architecture is fairly simple in that over the last five months, our infrastructure team have been pairing new ODA instances with every HCM instance we have for every customer. So as of today, bar a few exceptions, every, every customer will have Oracle Digital Assistant uh, environments alongside every HCM pod they have. And as part of that pairing process, we've hooked the Digital Assistant up to a skill store, and the skill store contains all of the uh, Oracle provided skills uh, spanning most of the SaaS pillars. You can see a list on the right-hand side there. There's, there's 10 skills in total spanning the three pillars. So this is the sort of the overall architecture. In terms of getting that set up, it's a process that takes about an hour and it's typically something that we would advise you as partners to, to steer your customers through because they'll probably be working with 
technology they haven't necessarily worked with before. So the starting point, obviously, for all the customers is they have their HCM pod that they are familiar with. Uh, and they will now have alongside that an ODA instance. Uh, we've also then set up federated authentication between HCM and ODA via a new IBCS stripe, again, allocated specifically to each HCM instance. And we've pre-configured user synchronization between HCM and IBCS with the aim of allowing HCM users to log into ODA. We've pre-configured the synchronization, but we haven't turned it on. And the idea is if a customer isn't using their ODA instance, we obviously don't want to have a synchronization job running that is serving no purpose. So when they provision, uh, when they subscribe to ODA for HCM, one of the first tasks they're gonna have to do is turn on that pre-configured uh, user synchronization, and that will copy the user base across synchronize the user base across from HCM to IDCS. And then the second piece they have to do within, within IDCS is grant those HCM users roles to log in to ODA. And all of this will be done inside IDCS. And again, this is a, an area that perhaps some of the customers won't be familiar with and hence the possible need for handholding. So at that point, customers are then able to log into their new ODA instance, and we can move on to doing a bit of configuration inside ODA itself. So this is reminiscent of a slide that uh, Martin showed you earlier with all the pieces that we've already described. So with these um, pre-provisioned um, digital ODA instances, we have an FA digital assistant, uh, which is provided by Oracle. It comes from the skill store. It's already installed. It's wired already to the appropriate back end, the, the HCM pod, the CX pod, the ERP pod. And there are these 10 pre-provisioned skills also wired to the appropriate back end. There's one piece that miss, is missing though uh, when you get the ODA instance, and that is the, the channel. So what you'll need to do is set up an Oracle web channel, uh, which is the representation of the little chat bubble that Martin showed you in the demonstration. You'll need to route that to FA Digital Assistant, and this is the Oracle provided Digital Assistant that then can pass queries off to all of the Oracle skills. And when you create that channel, you'll get a unique channel ID, and you'll need to make a note of that, and we're gonna use that uh, to complete the setup in inside HCM. So at this point, when you move over to HCM, the customer's probably getting more familiar with the tasks that you'll need to do. And there are three tasks you have to do inside the HCM platform to complete the setup. Firstly, you'll need to import a couple of new roles um, <clears throat> for employees and managers that will give them the right to use the digital assistant. You then need to set two profile options. Uh, one is the channel ID that we uh, picked up from the last step inside ODA. And another is simply a, a profile option that turns on the code that will enable Digital Assistant itself. And finally, we need to go into HCM Experience Design Studio and copy the channel ID there as well. And this is also where you can configure the visual appearance of the chat bubble, changing colors, icons, uh, and which controls appear, for example, the audio controls. At this point, just in terms of practicality, the customer needs to log out and log in to refresh their roles. And at that point, you'll get the chat bubble and can start testing. So it's a reasonably straightforward process, but like I say, it will take the customer perhaps into areas that they haven't been before. So we do recommend um, checking whether or not they have the skills to do it themselves, and if not, uh, guiding them through that process. One important point to mention is that this is a fully functional ODA instance that, you, that, that has been paired to all of the HCM instances. And with the ODA for HCM subscription, you, the customer is entitled to make a lot of modifications uh, to utterances, intents, entities. You can, change, you can delete uh, uh, or add custom components. You can modify that conversational flow that Martin was talking about. And we also use resource bundles and you can change the text that comes in the um, digital assistance responses 
and or uh, translations if you if you like to do that and all of that can be done under the ODA for HCM subscription if you want to go beyond that and uh, add a skill that perhaps talks to a different back end then there's an, an additional subscription which is the ODA platform for SAS so you'd have to get that the key thing about this um, extension framework is that when you extend the skill uh, that comes from the skill store all of the changes that you make are tracked by ODA and when you then subsequently pull an update from Oracle um, your changes will be merged in automatically and if there are any uh, potential conflicts then you're given the option to choose whether you want to keep the Oracle change or your own change so you're, you're you, you can make all these changes safe in the knowledge that they're easily preserved as, as you move forward with Oracle updates. So thanks to Hashir for the excellent introduction and the customer success stories and what partners can get out of it. Thanks to you, Martin, for the wonderful live demo. Thanks for the great overview. And also thanks to Ryan for how to get started. How can we support you as a partner in the next steps and where to find more information? We have sales kits for you available at Sales Central. Make sure you check it out. There you find a sales kit for Oracle Digital Assistant and it's specific also for Oracle Digital Assistant for SaaS. I would like to point out the battle card, which is a great overview, which you can put on your mobile devices. And there is a customer presentation in PowerPoint format, much more information like infographics and specific information like digital assistance for SaaS. Each battle card includes the information how to prepare, engage, position, qualify, prove, compete, and additional resources. So it's really the two-page overview for you guys. Make use of it. Sales Central is available at oracle.com slash partner slash go to slash sales central. There is much more, not only a uh, digital assistant sales kit, there's also a kit how to connect and extend SaaS solutions, how to integrate them. Please uh, take a look at them. How can you get started and how can you become an expert in Oracle Digital Assistant? If you would like to try the platform, please get a free trial. And the link is cloud.oracle.com slash try it. You got a free $300 trial that you can use on top of the always on platform to burn credits for Digital Assistant. If you had a trial before, you can reach out to your partner manager. He can whitelist you for an additional trial and also extend the current trial. If you would like to have access to SaaS solutions like Oracle HCM, please visit demo.oracle.com. There you can get shared in instances of Oracle HCM Cloud to connect them with Oracle Digital Assistant. If you would like to learn more, we send out a monthly newsletter as part of the developer community. The registration link is tinyurl.com slash oracle dc. And we have tons of training material for Oracle Digital Assistant, how to get started. Uh, really nice documentation at bit.ly slash ODA enablement. And we would like to encourage you to become a certified expert in Oracle Digital Assistant. With that, let's open up for questions. So I've first of all, quite a few questions on the chat coming through in private so before you let's get through some of these because there's a couple of good ones here someone was asking me the sheriff was asking why do typos not matter with chatbot because uh, you might have noticed that i was typing so fast um, that uh, i made a few typos basically the the ai and the machine learning does the same thing you and i would do it has a rough idea what sort of questions i'm going to be asking because through its training data and it's trying to match what you typed uh, against its training data, which is exactly the same as you and I do if someone had mistyped uh, a message that they were sending you. And it does the best job it can is actually matching them together. And uh, as you saw, the training data we've got is very good, very robust. And so despite my typos, it was able to match that against the intents. So okay. you got any more? Yeah, we've got a couple of questions where the slides are available. The slides are available at the community workspace and you need to be a member in the community. Uh, please register and within a week you get access to the community workspace. I'm on holiday, but I promised I will uh, add the new members this week. So please register for the community, then you get access to the workspace. You will also receive a follow-up email with all the details. Uh, somebody um, was asking, can you share export the web channel COVID bot? They were, I think they were saying they tried to click on the Beehive link, but uh, it didn't work. Is there a problem? Posting that we can check afterwards, but I, I put the link to the COVID bot in the chat in any case for people who are interested. Okay, which language support does Oracle Digital Assistant? 
Uh, well, we support uh, multiple languages through translation services. So uh, one of the preferred ones is Google Translate. Uh, so anything that Google Translate supports, we can support. Uh, and it works surprisingly well. A lot of people kind of go, oh, Google Translate, that's gonna be terrible. But in actual fact, you saw how bad my typos were. Well, you know, Google Translate only has to be as good as that because all we're ever using Translate for is to translate the inbound message. And as long as there is enough words in the right, in the right sort of order, roughly the right order, for the bot to figure out what it was you were asking for, uh, it can then reply. And all of the replies that we do would be done in the native language. So you would put those in your resource bundle. So you wouldn't let, leave that to Google, you would actually take control of that yourself. Uh, and in fact, the COVID-19 bot that I, I just shown you, um, that is actually running at the moment in German, French, Arabic, uh, and a couple of others, I can't remember. But if you, if you want to get on there and have a play with that, uh, then you can try talking to it in different languages. Okay, then there's a question from Deborah regarding pricing. Uh, she mentions that if she, uh, she asks if there are two pricings available, one for the platform and one for the SaaS solution. Can you give some details on that? Uh, for pricing, I would, I would point you at the uh, website links that we've uh, already given out. Uh, that's probably the safest way. But it's correct to say that Oracle has a digital assistant platform which comes empty and you can customize, build any bots that you want, or you can buy the Oracle digital assistant SaaS skill for HCM. Correct, yeah. Okay. Uh, does the security apply to configuration in Oracle HCM? Uh, that might be one for Ryan. Yeah, Ryan. Yes, I'll take that. So all of the, inter all of the interaction between the digital assistant and HCM uh, obviously, it comes in via that web, uh, well, it comes in via REST APIs, but then it, it executes standard internal calls and all of the existing um, authentication framework and security framework is is enforced. And I think Martin saw that when he tried to ask for the uh, salary of an employee that didn't report to him. Okay. At Oracle Open World, we showed Oracle Voice, so digital assistant can also speak. Um, is that also available as part of the demo for HCM? And which languages do we support for voice? Sorry, I went on mute because I was just trying to talk to um, our bot to see if I could get it working because I didn't practice beforehand. <laughs> uh, so for the, um, uh, say that again, I missed it, I was good distracted. So in the HCM demo, is there also Oracle voice enabled and which languages does it support? So within the HCM, um, voice is not included in the HCM's uh, subscription. Um, you would need to also buy the platform to be able to enable voice, um, but we can enable that very quite, uh, quite simply. Uh, it is a channel that you can use. I was just gonna try and, I'm gonna take a massive risk here. I'm gonna just show you the COVID one. I'm sure it's gonna work. I have, I have tried it. Uh, but I haven't set up my laptop for it, that was all. Oh. Let's just see. What is COVID-19? No, okay, so my laptop's not set up. That was a complete base <laughs> fail. <laughs> okay. Um, then there's a question, do we have a HCM bot available as a plugin or is it required to build? No, it, it's not required to build. It's um, uh, Oracle um, deliver it via the skill store. So when you uh, log into your PED ODA instance, you will see the HCM skill and can download it and use it straight away. And that's a follow-up question. How can we get a list of standard skills and where to download them? So there is, there is a white paper. I don't know if it's part of, um, of your links, Jürgen, but uh, we can add that. Okay. And Martin, there's a question for you. How can I integrate a chatbot with any other application? Uh, and the simplest answer is as long as it exposes a REST API, we can get uh, data into or out of it. Um, so that's the simplest answer. If it doesn't uh, expose REST, then we could use our integration cloud uh, or you know, some other mechanism. That's usually the question is usually that that is on the back end. If it's a front end type question you're asking, like how could we embed the chat widget in another application? Well, the chat widget itself is delivered either as um, sort of JavaScript libraries that you can embed in a web page. So any web page that you can embed some JavaScript into, you can put that chat widget. But we also have SDKs for iOS, Android, 
Um, and there are also a set of technologies called webhooks, which enable you to embed the bot in other other platforms like um, Alexa and Google Home, for example. They allow you to plug the digital assistant in on the front end on different types of applications. A, a random and, sample. And just to add to that, Martin, on, on the HCM side, if you're trying to access functionality that, that isn't in the seeded intents, uh, you can use uh, deep links even if there's no REST API. And for some customers who use Oracle Integration Cloud or Oracle Source Suite, would it be also possible to use the integration platform to integrate with Digital Assistant? Yes, it would, yeah. Okay. Um, next question is from Sumesh. Can we integrate uh, this with a messaging channel like Slack? Yeah, Slack is built in out of the box. Um, Slack and Microsoft Teams, obviously they're more useful in an employee environment. You wouldn't use those in a B2C environment, which is where often the web channel gets used. Uh, but yeah, you can set them up in Slack and in Microsoft Teams. Okay, then a question from Spotta. Can we develop and add new skills? You certainly can. And you would need, if you've, if you've taken the HCM skills and you've paid for the HCM subscription, you would also need to buy the ODA platform for SaaS to be able to do that. Uh, but that would enable you to build as many custom skills, talking to any back end that you wanted in conjunction with your HCM skills. Okay, and for partners, you can also publish if you build your own chatbot. Let's say for universities, you can publish such a chatbot in the Oracle Cloud Marketplace and promote it there. I had a question asking about, uh, can we do voice in Arabic? Uh, unfortunately, voice is just limited to English right now. So the the uh, information I was giving you around translation only applies to text, uh, but we'll very shortly be having uh, native voice support coming out in European languages in the next couple of months. Those are near term roadmap items. Okay. I have I got a couple of times a question again, where can I find the presentation? It's on the community workspace. You need to be a community member and the links are in the invitation and in the follow up. Martin, what other private questions you get? I'm getting lots. I'm getting, they're coming in faster than I can possibly answer. Them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, somebody was asking <clears throat> more about the source code, I think, about the COVID-19 skill, uh, the YAML, et cetera. Uh, if you doubt, if there is a link on, say, if you take the, the slide deck from today, there's a link on there, on that slide deck, where you can download the source. The source is a zip file, and it's a complete skill that's got the intents the uh, training data and the YAML. So you can take a good look at all of that. So we have uh, five more minutes and we will continue to answering your questions uh, in case we can't answer them, all of them, what's the best way for partners to start with Digital Assistant and to continue to raise the questions? Well, I would suggest that the, the, as you said before, the best way to start is with um, a trial, um, free trial. So they could actually go through the certification exam and look at the uh, ODA enablement materials that you've also given the link to. If they want to ask questions, um, myself and Ryan and the team are all hanging out on the Custom Connect forum. So that's a good place to ask questions. Okay, just to make sure that everybody has the links, here we are. Please make sure you become a member in the partner community, that you become a certified expert and use our partner network cloud connection and customer connection to answer your questions. And for more details, visit the Digital Assistant website. Um, language support, we discussed about it. Does someone need to know AI to configure this as a skill set? Well, that's a good question. No, absolutely not. Uh, you know AI rocket science required. Um, we've taken all that pain away. Uh, it's very declarative. You just set up some intents. That was what they're called, you know, a uh, definition of what the user intends to do. Give it, give it uh, five, 10, 20 training phrases, and then press the train button. And all the AI magic happens in the background. Um, you can set up your first bot in less than an hour. Cool. Can you retrain the AI? Yeah, there are tools for developers to train the AI uh, or to train the bot. Uh, but there are also tools for the business user. So over time, you kind of look at your bot, see how it's been performing. Um, there are uh, uh, analytics or insight reports telling you how well the bot's been performing. If there's anything the bot doesn't understand, 
even a business user can go down the list and go click, click, click. These are what the bot should have uh, interpreted these phrases to mean and to retrain that bot, uh, the bot that way. And it's, it's a process that you do continually, just as if it was a member of your team, a real human being. You know, you put them to work for six weeks and every six weeks you'd assess their performance and give them extra training if they're needed. That's exactly how you should treat your bot. Okay. Do we have other SaaS skills available for Oracle Digital Assistant like CRM? Uh, we do. We have the Oracle sales skill. In fact, um, uh, in the slide deck that um, Ryan showed earlier on, there was a picture of the skills store and you could see some of the some of the skills that are already available in there. The most recent one that's just been released is the expenses skill. Uh, that's now available in the uh, skills store for, 20, for Fusion customers who have got 20B. Okay, question for Ryan and Hashir. If an organization created skills in PeopleSoft HCM, how easily do they convert to the cloud? So all of the, the logic that you have in the conversational flow would apply. What you need to do is look at the mapping of the PeopleSoft REST APIs to the REST APIs that are available for HCM. Uh, I don't have that information to hand, but that would be the, the key point. Okay, then a question from HBM. Can we connect Oracle Digital Assistant with other Oracle services like Big Data Cloud Service or any other third party data lake provider? Yeah, anything that exposes a REST API, you can get Digital Assistant to talk to. You have to think of Digital Assistant as being your conversational user interface. Um, even though it's an AI engine, it's not there to analyze your data. It's not there to kind of find patterns in your data and provide reports or anything. Yeah? It's there to provide a conversational interface on top of it. So if you've got a backend system, a big data system, even if it's using AI or not, uh, that's the way to get your data out and then just expose it through a digital assistant. Okay. And last question we take for Hashir is, what skill set is required to customize and personalize the digital assistant? Yeah, so uh, as, as Martin said, it's quite easy. To, to, to personalize. There is no, uh, no artificial intelligence to know. I think the best way is, as Martin said, to, uh, to have a trial and uh, try it by yourself. It's, uh, it's quite easy. I was able to do it myself. So it means that it's quite easy. Great. Thank you very much for attending today's webcast. Thanks to all the presenters and Steve in the studio. Please make sure that you take a look at Oracle Digital Assistant. Oracle Digital Assistant comes with each HCM environment. So it's a great opportunity at our joint customer base. If you do some HCM consulting, if you do customer implementations, you can generate additional consulting service by also building a conversational UI. Make sure you visit the Digital Assistant website and the partner network cloud connection to ask your questions and please become a certified expert and join our community. Thanks for attending today's community webcast and hope you join next month. Thank you for attending.